consumer shutdown. That's how the White House is framing this, but how is it playing in the court of public opinion? Let's talk about it with Sarah Westwood, White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner, and Kelsey Harkness, a senior reporter with the Daily Signal. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Okay, so we have some up-to-date fresh polling on this, so let's talk about this. First, let's look at our CNN poll. Uh, if the federal government shuts down, do you think uh, the president, the Republicans in Congress, or the Democrats would be most responsible? So 21% goes to the president, 26 to Republicans in Congress. So together, that's 47% of this that's going to the GOP. 31% say Democrats in Congress, 10% say all of them. Uh, so the, it looks like at this point, Kelsey, there's plenty of blame to go around. I think maybe that 10% is right. But really, we know the media is, the media and the Democrats are going to do all they can to blame Republicans for this. But very, very clearly, this was not Republicans' fault. President Trump could not have been more transparent in this process, in his attempt to reach a deal. He allowed national TV to actually witness the negotiations where we did see him attempt to compromise with Democrats and work with Democrats across the table. Democrats are the ones voting no. We all know Republicans need 60 votes. They can't do this on their own. Well, and tonight, Sarah, they lost some Republican votes. And maybe it's because they knew that it wasn't going to pass anyway and they were voting on principle. I mean, what do you make of us having, we know that Senator McConnell, his vote was simply so he can stay procedurally able to reopen the vote. But the four other Republicans were truly no votes on moving forward on this thing. Well, there are Republicans who are frustrated with the fact that we keep having continuing resolutions instead of an omnibus that actually funds the government through the end of the fiscal year. What I thought was interesting was that we saw red state Democrats cross the aisle and join with Republicans. There are uh, 10 red state Democrats who are up for re-election in the Senate in states that Trump won, and so far we haven't seen them join Republicans on any major policy, not on Obamacare reform, not on tax cuts, but they recognize that potentially this would create a backlash with those constituents. So it's interesting that this is the moment when they finally choose to caucus with Republicans. We've sort of been waiting to see what issue would push those mm -hmm. vulnerable Democrats into the Republican camp. Yes, yeah, so we have Senators Donnelly, Heitkamp, uh, Manchin, Jones, who's the brand new senator from Alabama, and McCaskill, who is in one of those elections. So um, do you think that they hold firm on this? I mean, if you can win back you know, all of your Republicans, you still would need a handful more of Democrats to get to that 60. Yes, and time is clearly winding down. Uh, we'll see if they can 23 meet minutes the, to go. <laughs> the midnight deadline. But I think what's important to keep in mind here and what Americans actually realize is that Republicans had good intentions going into this. A lot of where the issues are coming up are in regards to immigration issues. We know Democrats want DACA. And we also know that Republicans would love some more money to fund the border and to uh, secure our country. And neither one of them are getting what they want in this case. I can understand maybe blaming Republicans if they did uh, sneak in some of their border wall funding to this bill, but they didn't do that. And so neither side is getting what they want when it comes to immigration. So I think Americans are going to see through the blame game when Democrats do try to blame Republicans for this. But Sarah, are the Democrats getting something? Because public opinion tends to be on their side, rightly or wrongly, when these things happen. So for them, if they think it's a winning uh, PR argument, even if they're not substantively getting what they want, do they still still count this as a win. Well, maybe because in the past, Democrats have successfully passed the blame off to Republicans when a shutdown happens. They think they can repeat it in this case. Republicans are in charge of all three branches of government, so certainly to a person who's not engaged in what's going on here, it would be logical to conclude that Republicans are responsible for the shutdown. But it is true that Republicans sort of exhausted all their options in this case to try to get Democrats to the table. And when you do see interviews with Democrats and they're being pressed on their rationale, why aren't you voting for the continuing resolution? The White House laid it out. There's nothing in the CR that Democrats actually oppose. What they oppose is what's not in the CR which is DACA, and as the White House has tried to outline, there's not actually a DACA deal to be attached mm -hmm. <laughs> to the bill. Even right. if Republicans wanted that, one doesn't exist right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not ready. And so that's why I think we're starting to see these talks about not, not the four-week CR, but maybe a few mm -hmm. days to buy some time to get some kind of immigration deal. Yeah, and it's not new that a minority party would want to use 
you know, an, uh, something that has to get passed, whether it's funding the government or another major measure that is more popular, um, to leverage it to try to get something that they want. So not unusual that even though the funding bill and the funding fight right now has nothing to do with immigration, that they would say, well, listen, the country needs this, the Republicans need this, this is what we want. They won't meet us halfway, so we've got to leverage this while we can. And I think Republicans have offered them solutions in this CR, like a six-year funding for the CHIP program, which, which provides health insurance for children. Um, that's longer than it's ever been reauthorized for before. And so I think, again, Democrats are going to have a hard time defending themselves in this situation. And we've already seen that Republicans are taking the high road. They've said they're not trying to politicize any sort of government shutdown, which is exactly what the Obama administration did when they faced the government shut down in 2013. You heard all these sob stories on the media about World War II vets not being able to visit the memorial. Well, it seems like Republicans are doing everything they can in this case mm -hmm. to avoid that and to help enable life to go on as usual. Mm -hmm. They're going to, it's going to be, it's business as usual. Wake up tomorrow, everything's going to be fine. I think this is going to be much different than parks closed, signs hanging everywhere. All right, um, Kelsey and Sarah, thank you very much. Don't go far. All right, we are about 20 minutes from the deadline, as President Trump said, it's not looking good. So let's talk.